Motley Crue's hard rock and Nikki Six talks about surviving six overdoses. I was on heroin, uh -huh. coke, pills, alcohol. All at coke, once? Coke. Oh, yeah, all at once. And tells Joy about the time he was declared dead. As a founding member of Motley Crue, my next guest is widely considered to be one of the world's foremost experts on the subjects of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. His new book is called This Is Gonna Hurt. Please welcome to my show, Nikki Six. How uh, you doing? Hey, Nick. You know, Nikki, I call yeah, you No, Nick. I like Nick. You like Nick? Well, my East Coast friends call me Nick. But your real name is Frank. I was born, yes. You were born Frank. Yes. But you changed it into Nikki. I changed it, yeah. My father's name was Frank, and when I was kind of a little uh, angry teenager, and, and he had left when I was three, and it kind of came to this place as a teenager, I'm like, I'm going to, you know, forge my own identity. I see. And, uh, and then, the, ironically, later, I named my, uh, my youngest daughter is named Frankie. Oh, so kind of like through forgiveness, I got to that place. So where you came around. Came back around, yeah. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Now I was reading all about you, so I find out that you have had six drug overdoses. Is that why you call yourself Nikki Six? No, but that, oh. that's a good story, though. Oh. <laughs> what a great story. What's the? Can story? I use that one? Yeah, use okay, it. Okay, good, good. But what is the six from? What's Nikki um, Six? Well, from? actually, honestly, there was a, a, a girl I was dating, and she had a boyfriend named Nikki Six who was in a uh, a previous boyfriend. And uh, he was in a top 40 band. And I really, I was going as Nikki London, and I was in a band called London. And I decided I wanted to change it because I didn't want to be Nikki London of London. And I was going to change it to nine, and I, I stole her. Uh, you just stole it. Yeah. All right, that's yeah. that's legit. Well, I'm honest, right? Yeah, no, I think that's good. Well, and you've done everything else. Why yeah. not thieve? That's what not thievery? that bad, is it? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> but you know, um, and then one time in these overdoses yeah. that you had, you were declared dead. Yeah, yeah. How did it feel to be dead? Uh, I feel God. That's a great song title, isn't it? <laughs> I'm getting a lot of lot of stuff from you. Yeah, yeah. we should like jam. Um, <laughs> you know, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> no, but how did it feel to be dead? Well, you know what? It's it's. Uh, did you see the light? You know, people say they see a light. I I can tell you things I saw. What'd you say? That, that I shouldn't be able to have seen. Like I saw the hotel hallway. I saw the ambulance. I saw the limo that was there. But. You know, I couldn't have really seen that because there was a sheet over me. And, you know, I really kept that to myself for a lot of years until I did the behind the music thing, and I kind of let it slip because other people kind of look at you and think you're a little bit crazy. Well, no, a lot of people believe that you, there is something that happens when yeah. you are declared dead. But you're, my feeling is you're not yeah. really dead. I don't think you, I mean... You're not really dead is what it is. Your mind is still operating. That's why you yeah. probably envisioned all these things yeah. in your head. And, and again, you know, I've, I've said, I don't know, may not have even ever seen that. I may have just thought that. And it, it kind of came out through, you know, all that. But I would assume that um, this was a wake-up call for you, right? After Absolutely. You, all the drug overdoses and then yeah. you, you're dead? Yeah. Was that the end of your drug use? I mean, it, it, that was the beginning of the end. It takes a while, and addiction's a really hard thing to, to kick. What were you um, on, heroin? I was on heroin, uh -huh. coke, pills, alcohol. All at all once? Oh, yeah, all at once. You know, why, why just do a little... You just wanted to obliterate let's just, let's reality. Just go. Yeah, and there was a lot of stuff for me, being a very young child and coming from a broken home Tell and being a it. teenage runaway yeah. and all that stuff. And then you get success, and that's a hard thing to deal with. And, uh, you know, through recovery, I've been able to do so much good stuff. And it's I'm, I'm a better songwriter. Um, you know, I'm a father of four. I'm able to make uh, decisions even in the face of adversity. And and uh, as an artist, I feel pretty, you know, pretty centered. You know, I have to deal with all the same stuff we all have to deal with, but I don't have anything to hide behind. I, I like that. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a lot of guys and women, I guess, who go through a lot of trauma as children, but they're not yeah. talented like you are. Yeah. And well, so you. they're in obscurity. But, you sure. know, you've gone all around the block, and here you want yeah. to tell it because you're famous. I'm, I mean, I think we have a, a bit of a responsibility, you know, once you've been through a lot of stuff to show it to the world that you can get through that kind of stuff and that's like when I was doing my new book and a lot of people I was photographing they've been through way worse stuff than anybody in this room or a lot of people listening have and they've been able to turn their lives around and that's what inspired me to shoot them and kind of tell their story and intermingle it with mine and right. when I'm doing the book signings it's amazing like how many teenagers are coming up and they have tears in their eyes and young adults and they're like you know I feel so inspired because in, in the end the concept behind the book is um, you know, you can get through anything if you want it bad enough. Sometimes, sometimes it does you in. You know, they it say if do, it yeah. doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger, but yeah. sometimes it kills you. Yeah. <clears throat> but, um, so the childhood sounds pretty bad. Yeah. 
You were abandoned by your father when you were three. Yeah. Well, that happens to a lot of people, too. I mean, listen, I think, I honestly think that, you know, my story is not 100% that unique. Yeah. I think that I'm just, uh, the whole rock star part kind of throws an interesting twist on it. Yeah. And then, for me, it's really more about how you handle it. But, but, but tell me what happened. Why did he leave your father? Do you know why? Was Don't he know. having, probably has to do with your mother. I'm and sure his own does. life, and maybe his own addictions. Exactly. But you, as the a trail, child. The trail goes very, it goes back and back and back and back. We follow this. In, in life, you know, I feel that uh, for any people that are in recovery, they have an opportunity to sort of break the chains, right? Yes. And like my children are kind of able, they, when they hear about drugs, they see other people doing drugs, they kind of have a barometer of what, wh where it's going to go mm -hmm. um, by looking at their father and I'm yeah. able to talk to him honestly about it. Well, that's good because you, you, what you're telling me is that you broke the cycle of abuse and neglect. Yes, yes. But a lot of people don't. You know, the whole, the, the whole pathology is that you, you're abused and then you abuse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, you know, but if you... Uh, and if the pathology you... is really interesting behind it, I find. Uh -huh. the, the, and the psychology behind addiction. And, and the breakdown emotionally and what happens to people and how they treat people. Yes. And then it continues. Like, if, you know, I'm, a, I'm an addict and I'm using, how many people do I affect? Behavioral. That's too, right. Right? And, and then, of course, you had the double whammy of your mother leaving you. And yeah. how old were you when your mother left? Uh, my mom, you know, took off when I was about six. What ended up happening is I ended up being with my grandparents. And it wasn't like so much of an abandonment issue. I, I feel it was abandonment, but I don't think in her case it was like I'm getting rid of my son. I think it was I'm young. I have uh, a son. I'm kind of in the 60s. I'm living the life. And he'll be with, you know, the grandparents, and I'll, you know, get him when I get my act together. And that kind of never really happened. It didn't really work out yeah. that way. Okay, you know, when we come back, yeah. I really am interested in hearing how you got out of all of that. Awesome. All right? Awesome. We'll be right back with more from Nikki Six in a minute. I'm back with the very tattooed Nikki Six. <laughs> You're about to show me everything you I, have. Yeah, you said you didn't have it's enough It's a family time. show also. I know. I, well, I can take off at least my shirt. Are uh, they on I, your I feet can, also? Uh, I have one on my foot, yeah. You do? Yeah. Just what if you change your mind and decide you want to go I'm tattoo in free? I'm You're in, in a lot I'm of in trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, a lot, a lot of trouble. Now, if you were Jewish, which I don't think you are, you're raised by Italians and My manager Irish. says I'm Jewish. I don't understand what but that means. But you can't means. be buried in the, if you <laughs> no, have you tattoos can't. You yeah, can't. in a Jewish cemetery. I know. So what if I convert now? To Judaism? Yeah, do I get kind of like a grandfather in type thing? I don't know, that I don't know, I have to... I'd I think I can to... find a loophole. Uh, listen, <laughs> I'm in Motley Crue, I can find a loophole. <laughs> That's true, <laughs> I know. Okay, so um, I love this part about how your whole band went into rehab together. Was it like couples therapy? Well, we, we have done, we have done sort of a weird version of couples therapy where the bands sit down and, uh, you know, bands are really like... Um, brothers. We're brothers, yeah. but we're also, it's like, you know, we're married. And, yeah. and it's really complicated, uh -huh. especially when you have nothing and then you get everything. And we start to age and you start to have things like families and the people go through divorces. And, oh, yeah. you know, it's the band can be extremely close and the most important thing and the band can fight so much that it's it's miserable. And but that's just you, honest. But but when you were in the rehab with them, mm -hmm. was that when you came to this uh, new self where you put away your past and got, you know, right. dealt with your anger and your rage toward your family and everything? Yeah. Well, no, that's something I've done on my I've done on my own, a lot of my own work. But we've never actually all four been in rehab together, but we did this kind of like therapy stuff together. Yeah. So people can confuse the two, but everyone's been into rehab, except for my guitar player. He's just too stubborn. He's too stubborn. He's too stubborn. Oh, well, before we go, I only have a little time. I was just wondering, um, I was reading that you thought that Steven Tyler on American Idol yeah. was doing a great job. I love him. He got a little flack because he's a rocker, and then he goes yeah. on this kind of you know, like a yeah. hokey show, yeah. right? So but, but think about it. We have this mainstream um, event happening, you know, all the time, millions and millions of people. And they have an opportunity to see a guy who can really sing, really write his own songs, can dresses himself, design sets. He's one of the greatest frontmen ever. And if anybody's going to pick the next rock star, I want it to be Steven. I say, well, I think that people do yeah. have to agree with you. He's doing very, very well there. Yeah, I think he's doing fantastic. Nikki, it's a pleasure to meet it's you. It's fantastic very meeting nice you, too. To have you and here. if you ever want to get a tattoo, I, I know a couple people. I don't have any space on my body. You don't have any space left? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nikki's album is also called This Is Gonna Hurt, and it's in stores now. Good night, everybody.